Well, hello YouTube. It's been a bit, and I know I said back in July that I was back, but I lied. My apologies. What I am doing today on this wonderful Thanksgiving weekend here in Canada is strip tilling. And uh, you might see a bit of that in Sandy's video uh, where uh, we have two strip till rigs here, and what we're doing is a comparison. Uh, we're demoing a different kind of strip till unit uh, versus the one that we already have. And I was going to take you along for the journey of how one compares to the other and uh, what I like about each one and which one uh, I would prefer. So with that, we'll hop in the tractor and we'll head to the field. So our good family friend uh, and Delta sales rep, uh, Brad Warwick, was kind enough to set up a demo for me with uh, a product they sell, Terra Forge, uh, makes a strip till unit. Uh, we'll take a look at it. But uh, I have an Orthman now, uh, one tripper, that uh, we've been using a six row. And uh, I've been a little concerned about, I guess it's rigor. Uh, it's a little, we've had some issues with bending points and breaking points. Uh, even though it has a trip mechanism that if it hits a big stone, it's supposed to pop up. Uh, but it seems to be kind of bending around stones and doing other things. So uh, we wanted to try a demo on a different unit that might be built a little heavier and won't cause that problem. So uh, what we're doing today is strip tilling some cover crop. That's quite growthy actually. And uh, going to see which one does a nicer job. Uh, we've been setting them up here this morning already. And uh, to be honest, both of them are doing a really good job. Uh, not a lot of difference, but uh, there are some. And we'll take a look at that when we get to the field. For those wanting to know what strip till is, strip till is when we work just a small zone of soil that we're going to plant the corn rows in next year. So uh, we plant our corn in 30 inch rows, uh, which is about, I think, 75 centimeters. And uh, what we do there is we work a little strip here in the fall. Uh, behind me you can see some strips. And uh, we are creating those zones that we're going to plant corn into. Uh, basically what it's doing is that we're working maybe a quarter, quarter of the soil profile. Uh, instead of kind of doing broad width tillage, which means we work the whole soil uh, from one side of the field all the way to the over. What we're doing here is just working small zones. Uh, where we want corn to grow. Uh, what that does is just gives us a lot less uh, risk for erosion. Uh, we're keeping kind of soil in place. Uh, we have the cover crop behind me that's also keeping soil in place. And what we find it's a really good balance between doing uh, full width tillage or doing no-till. Uh, no-till we struggle with soil temperatures in the spring and getting the corn off to a really good start. But with these uh, zones that we have here, the soil warms up a lot quicker in the spring and it just kind of is a better start for the corn plant. So uh, that's kind of why we do strip till in the first place. It's just a really good way for us to help improve our soil health but still get uh, the yield benefit from some kind of tillage. So from a comparison standpoint, uh, both units are working the soil about eight inches deep and they're both making kind of a, I would say a nine inch to a 10 inch strip uh, width and uh, we're both going seven miles an hour. So we're trying to keep everything somewhat consistent uh, to have a fair comparison between the two. Uh, what we're doing here is my corn uh, planter is 12 rows, 30 feet. Uh, so what we're doing uh, is kind of 24 rows. So two widths of the corn planter. So we're doing basically 24 rows of zones uh, with my Orthman behind me, the one that we own. Uh, three-point hitch kind of behind here I'll show you later uh, and then we're doing three passes with the eight row Terra Forge that we have demoing right now so that way I can compare kind of 24 rows of the Terra Forge 24 rows of the Orthman and uh, it's kind of a we're gonna do it across the field here
So that's Jess from the Orthman behind me, as you saw it go by. And uh, I'll show you some of the strips. It's windy as heck out here, so hopefully uh, you can hear me okay. Uh, just checking the width between them. It looks like there's a bit of a gap here. Too much of a gap, kind of right there. And that's the guest row, which is one pass versus the next pass. And it's always kind of a little bit of a variable that we have to figure out. I think it's okay. Um, yeah, I think it's okay. Uh, it just it looks funny sometimes with the cover crop and the way stuff works, but yeah, so that's it working. Uh, you can kind of just see it's hard the tumbling action you get with the making the strip, but I'll show you what a strip looks like close up. So there's a strip, uh, a couple other ones here. And you can see the row cleaners really kind of get fairly aggressive because they'll uproot some of these plants and throw the root ball out with them. Uh, but it's not the end of the world because uh, it's making a pretty nice strip with those row cleaners running. So just to give you an idea, there's a width of my hand on the strip. And it's almost a full width. And uh, here's the zone of soil that we've worked. And give you an idea on depth, nice earthworms. So we are working it fairly deep. We're trying to get out some any potential compaction. So we got a nice zone here, all kind of worked and shattered that the corn will get planted into. So there kind of gives you an idea. We're probably eight inches. My non-scientific measurement uh, but that's kind of a strip that will kind of go through winter and we'll plant stale in the spring and what we mean stale is we'll just come in here with the planter, run some row cleaners to kind of fluff it up or move any big clumps out of the way and uh, we'll be good to go. So uh, what we're doing here is uh, there's a gap right here and I'm going to hop into the Terra Forge and run it but we're doing 24 rows as I said over here. 24 of the Orthman, 24 of the Terra Forge, 24 of the Orthman. And then we're just going to keep going with the Orthman towards the chicken barns. I'm going to go on the far side of the field and uh, run the Terra Forge on that side. And it kind of give us a comparison on the field, uh, what it looks like. And then we're going to try uh, a field of we uh, bean stubble that we did yesterday. But here's the cover crop and give you an idea, like it's almost up to my knees. Uh, this was planted middle of August, so we've had almost two months of growth. Three tons of chicken manure was applied, so it's using up the nitrogen that's in the chicken manure, but multi-species cover crop uh, with brassicas, as you can see here, some fava beans, that's a fava bean. Uh, brassicas which are like cabbages or radishes that kind of thing we got some Austrian winter peas here flax right here the grass is oats um, yeah I'm pretty happy with it. there's some flower sunflowers in here too that most of them survived the frost uh, I'll see if I can find one but the frost uh, they're fairly frost sensitive sunflowers so we have to uh, sometimes they just don't make it because uh, we had that early frost in September. But really happy with the growth we got out of the cover crop. It's such a an awesome thing for soil health and keeping the soil with living roots in it all the time. Here's some Orthman strips again that we did that are looking good. And here's the Terra Forge right here. So the Terra Forge strips are a little higher, a bit more of a berm, uh, and the soil's a little bit uh, more contained, but uh, very similar style strip. Here's a great example of the Terra Forge. So just a little higher, I would say, um, maybe a little fluffier scientific term a little bit wider of a strip but 
digging down, it's about the same depth, maybe a bit deeper. But it's looking good. So I'm gonna hop into the Terra Forge up there on the headland and finish these swaths here. And uh, we'll have those spots for comparison, but it's just a beautiful fall day here. I don't know if you can pick it up, but the corn's kind of frosted off, but the trees are just beautiful. There is a lonely sunflower plant. Sad part is because we planted late and it was actually kind of cool. They never flowered. Sometimes we will get to Thanksgiving weekend and uh, we'll have flowering come, uh, flowering sunflowers at, at Thanksgiving and it's kind of uh, just a nice little, nice little thing to look at. When we started this morning, uh, it was pretty heavy dew and the cover crop was quite wet so things were a little tacky but it's kind of dried out nice now and uh, probably do a little bit nicer job and not have mud sticking to it but that's the Terra Forge outfit here so like the Orthman it's got a basket on the back but this one has got a hump in it to leave a bit of a mound uh, for it to settle over winter where on the Orthman it's straight across it also has the coulters on the back like the Orthman does to work here's the shank down there, it's hard to see. Uh, what's different about the Terra Forge versus the Orthman is that it's got these containment coulters here. And what they do is as the shank goes through the ground, it tends to boil up soil and wants to throw it around. And those coulters on either side of the, the shank keep it in that area. Kind of, you can see here, uh, it keeps it within the Within the narrow, it keeps it narrow enough that it goes in between these uh, rear coulters uh, and kind of keeps it all contained. And why you see a little bit less blowout, uh, a lot less blowout with the Terra Forge versus the Orthman, because the Orthman does not have these. Uh, these are a lot closer on the Orthman, and I'll show you, which is their attempt to keep the it from boiling out, but it still seems to boil out uh, out of the roll uh, into the space in between the strips. Uh, depth is controlled uh, here with the depth bands. It's got a coulter in behind it here and then these are very very aggressive roll cleaners to help move some of that heavy cover crop out of the way. Uh, down there you can barely see it but there's the point there. So uh, air, air bag down pressure, air bag adjust on the roll cleaners which is nice. You can do that all inside the cab. Uh, where the Orthman is, you have to pull a pin and adjust the roll cleaners, uh, a little bit more difficult. So this is, uh, from a TerraForge standpoint, a little easier to set, depth is easier to set. Uh, 15 16 socket on there will adjust that you roll this shank up and down from a depth standpoint. Uh, and uh, so it's a little easier to adjust than the Orthman because uh, the Orthman uses nuts and bol or bolts actually to jam it in place. So, uh, and I'll I'll go over the Orthman uh, a little later, but kind of gives you an idea. Now, the way this is set up, it's got dry fertilizer. You can blow down two cart two tanks, so you can do uh, two different products, uh, variable rate. This is just the way the demo unit's set up. Uh, I'm not really too worried about any of that. Uh, we're focused more on just what this roll unit, how it does and how it looks. We'll hop in, take, our, take it for a rip, and you can see kind of it in action. Uh, but as I said, you kind of saw the strips and uh, kind of the overall way this works and the fact it's a little bit more adjustable within the cab and a little easier to do that than the Orthman. Uh, and this is a uh, eight roll and it's taking some ponies. So uh, it's, working, it's working the tractor a little bit. The tractor's 300 plus horsepower, probably 340. Uh, and weighted down decent for tillage so uh, it's moving some soil and it's working the tractor which is good because uh, I'm a little concerned that this farm actually might have some compaction in it so we're going deep enough to hopefully rip out that compaction so uh, and the roots from the cover crops are going to help that a lot too so we'll hop in the tractor and go for a rip.
Where'd the tape measure go? In my pocket. So the depth control on this TerraForge is done with a gear drive. And what you do is you put a 15, 16 socket in here and you can pull a pin up here. And you pull these little levers out here and then you can just adjust it like this. Which is really nice because uh, I can show you on the Orthman later uh, we actually don't have this kind of fine adjustment. We have to take jam nuts out and sometimes it slides down and then you're trying to lift it up and tighten it. So the Orthman is horrible to adjust depth. Uh, this is a lot nicer. So what are you changing it to? What was it at and what are you changing We figured it, to? it was about eight and a half inches, eight to nine, which is, is borderline deep for our soils. So uh, I'm trying to take about two inches of depth, two and a half inches of depth off. So we'll be six, six, six inches, six and a half inches probably is what I'm aiming for. magnetic screwdrivers. <laughs> so when you're trying to put them away nicely and they just all hit each other. I do have to say farming is not a young person's game. Mm -hmm. Or it's not an old person's game. Okay squirt. Yeah. I'm gonna get in here to adjust the step. If I can. Okay, the way this one works here is that there's these two bolts that basically jam against the uh, shank that holds it in place and then there's these lock nuts. Uh, so we have to back off the pressure on the nuts here, the jam nuts, and then loosen these off. But unlike the TerraForge, this one has no way to hold it. So I have to put this bottle jack underneath to hold the shank from dropping right out. And then we got to jack it up to kind of get to where I want to go with it. So it's not very fun to adjust depth. So we don't like to do it very often, but uh, I'm just a little afraid it's running a little too deep and getting into damage with stones. So we're gonna have to shallow it up. That one's loose already. Hey Jess, you wanna come over here? Hey. Oh, they're both loose. Jesus. 
Um, just jack it up. Keep going. Keep going. Keep just going. a bit more. Just slow. Okay, whoa. Whoa, whoa. I just have to check the one over here. I should get a tape because even though there's a sticker on the side, it's never always right. So we're basically seven and an eighth off the frame. Seven and an eighth off the frame. So we're good. And then you just tighten these back up. Good if you get that for me. Watch your head. There. So we're back strip tilling. Uh, yesterday didn't quite go as planned. We ran into issues both with the uh, TerraForge and the Orthman. Uh, we have, I guess, stones. And I always know we have stones, but uh, we just ran into a problem where we actually broke uh, a couple points on the TerraForge and we broke a few on the Orthman. So my side-by-side -side kind of got uh, sidetracked yesterday. Uh, but today, as you can see behind me, we are running the TerraForge. Uh, Brett was gracious enough to get us uh, some extra points here on holiday Monday. And I got the TerraForge back going here around oh, 1 o'clock this afternoon. And uh, I shelled it up a little bit. I shelled both units up. I just was wondering if we are getting a little too deep and catching too many stones. And instead of being able to lift the stone up when you hit it and kind of push it up towards the ground, we were deep enough it was not quite tripping like it's supposed to. And then as a result, uh, the point was either on the Orthman going sideways and bending it. We, every shank is bent on that thing. I kind of got it glued together. It's still making decent strips. Uh, so I'm comfortable with the Jess is running it right now to finish up another farm. Uh, the TerraForge, I'm uh, quite happy with because uh, there's no bent shanks. Uh, we got through the few points uh, that we had some issues with uh, and uh, not sure what happened whether it was kind of operator error on my part uh, but uh, it's been working great we've done 30 acres here with it today and i like the way the strip looks uh, it's very similar to the strip that i was showing you yesterday uh, and just uh, happy with what it's doing heavy cover not quite as heavy cover crop here uh, but there's still a pretty significant cover crop. Having run both of them now uh, over the last two days, the Orthman I'm quite used to. Um, but I kind of run the uh, TerraForge here today. TerraForge is a lot easier to do infield adjustments. Uh, you know, you saw in the video where we were changing the depth on it and you kind of use a ratchet to crank it up or crank it down and you have these little catches that hold it in place, you put a pin through and uh, you got your depth set. Where on the Orthman you have to do those two jam bolts and then uh, kind of use a jack to move it up and down, it's less precise. So I, I was not quite happy with the depth here when I got to the field. Uh, so in probably about not even, well, about 10 minutes, uh, we had the depth adjusted uh, a little bit deeper, an inch deeper. So we're going a, a true six inches right now. We were only five when I started. So infield adjustment's awesome on this thing. 
and uh, the bag pressure uh, for downforce on the, the row unit or the knife uh, is all in the cab and same with the row cleaners, uh, the airbag on them to adjust how much force the uh, row cleaners are pushing trash out of the way. So uh, in-field adjustments uh, on the Terraforge is pretty awesome. Uh, maybe we'll hop out here and take a look at the strip again. So from the view in the cab, the strip doesn't look that wide or that big, but when you get out and look at it, uh, kind of in the field, uh, it's a pretty big strip. So I'll flip you around and you can take a look at it. So here's what it's going into. Uh, here's some of the cover crop. Not quite as big as yesterday's. Uh, you know, shin high, kind of a little bit, a little bit bigger. This stuff was planned a little bit later too. Uh, so here's the strip. And perspective, kind of, there's my hand. So it might not look wide from the tractor. And there's some of the oats uh, in the strip, but it's making a nice wide strip. Uh, soil is just borderline uh, from a moisture standpoint. Uh, this farm isn't tiled, so uh, I, I'd expect that, but kind of here's what we're doing. Making a nice little zone for corn next year, but yeah. Kind of, I would say a good uh, six inches, so that's the zone. And uh, I do like wider zones. Uh, it gives us a little bit more leeway with the planter when we're coming in here in the spring to plant corn uh, because we're not matching up the 12 row planter because uh, this is an eight row. So having a little bit wider strip gives us a little bit more flexibility planting. Uh, but I really like the width. I like a little bit of height here that we're getting. Um, a lot more than the Orthman would be just because uh, the baskets have a hoop, uh, like a curve in them so they don't flatten it right out uh, but uh, so there that will settle over winter and it'll make a nice strip in the spring so I'm looking forward to seeing what these look like uh, a few months from now when we come back to plant corn but uh, yeah once we got her dialed in she's pretty awesome And I, I give any outfit credit to make a, a nice plantable strip in that kind of cover crop. Uh, that's a challenge for a lot of stuff and uh, this one's doing it well. Time to hop in the chariot. <laughs> 